Colmac Institute of Professionals is a life-transforming college as well as a pension, human resource and finance management consultancy and corporate training organization. Register for academic and professional courses in business management, ICT, sales and marketing, purchasing and supplies, project management, banking and finance, CPA, CIFA, pension management, among others. We also have short courses on forex trading, graphic design, digital marketing, web development, programming, French, computer packages, property and real estate management, Islamic finance, and more. For more information and inquiries, call us on 0708-355-941 or email us at inquiries at hallmark.or.ke. Find us in Nairobi Harambe Avenue, Agriculture House, third floor. Each one of you, thank you for joining us this evening for a great session of lunch. I'm happy to see that uh, one of our first, uh, our our presenters today, Bwana Paul, is already in the house. I was giving uh, Madam Grace a few minutes to be able to join in, but I think she will catch up with us as we progress. And uh, I think it's high time we start because at exactly 20, 2010, we need to be starting to hear from them. I'm so I'm honored to be meeting all of us this evening. Thank you, uh, Tim Hallmark, for making this possible. Christine uh, Dalton and anyone else who is around. I want to believe that I'm audible enough. And uh, I think uh, we'll just open with a word of prayer, as it's always our culture. And then we can start um, uh, recording the program. Father, we honor you this evening and we bless your holy name. We thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for enabling us to gather here once again so that we can uh, we can agree and learn from the experts that you've given us this evening. We declare your blessings upon uh, them and upon all the learners and even much more upon Hallmark Institute of Professionals as we transform lives. Thank you for this is the grace that you've given unto us. So we give ourselves tonight and pray that you're going to teach us all that you want us to learn tonight. And as we go out there, we are going to put it into practice to the glory and honor of your name. We bless you and we honor you tonight. For we pray this believing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So I would request that we can stream. Good to see you, Mr. Paul. I will continually uh, call to confirm if Grace is around. And uh, we, we are very expectant. Thank you for all of you participants that have been able to join in tonight. I think uh, looking around, I can see, yeah, we are quite a good number, enough for us to start. Thank you to my city, Derek and Tim, for enabling us also to be on YouTube and on Facebook, so that in case someone is not able to fit in that platform, they will not also miss out. Uh, so Atara Solutions, good to see you. I notice your presence right now. Uh, Boniface, Musembi, Caro, Catherine, Christine, Dendan, Eric, um, ESS, excellent. Wow, uh, that's, I don't know, I believe that's a name, excellent Mwalimu. Uh, that's a good one, Flo and Flora, uh, Francis and uh, Henry. Good, I can see we are quite a number. iPhone, if you can rename yourself, that will be good. Jackie, Jane, um, who else is here? Juliet, Kellen, uh, Kibidi, Mohammed, good to see you, Leonard. Wow, a number. Uh, Mercy, Lilim, Nobat. Uh, ha, I will not be able to mention all of us uh, in respect of time. But allow me, even as we progress, to appreciate also uh, from Irene to everyone. I can't hear you. Can somebody confirm if I'm audible or not? I can hear you, uh, Irene. Thank you, thank you. So uh, someone else says I'm audible. So probably uh, uh, someone, Irene, you're the one who probably needs to check on your gadget. But I want to take this opportunity to appreciate all our, our partners who have been working with us as we transform lives through 
uh, life skills trainings. And today, I think I can confess and say I've been I've been looking forward to hosting uh, one that we call Madam Grace, the moderator of choice. And I've always wondered she needs to be more on the other side of the of the table. And uh, I congratulate myself that I I managed to put you across the table. I know you are the moderator of choice. I'm also a moderator, but I decided to leave the moderator of choice for you. But I'm so happy to have you on that side of the table. Uh, Bonapol Goge and uh, Madam Jane, I'm so glad that I get to know you through uh, this forum. And so I believe in you and I look forward to really uh, learning. And also to appreciate our partners that have been working with us uh, through the Life Skills Training as Hallmark Institute of Professionals as we desire to do um, uh, to transform lives uh, beyond academic and professional courses. I was just playing a video earlier that was telling you about the things that we do, but they are basically active at college. Um, offering academic and professional courses, basically examined by the national bodies like NEC. We also have courses by CASNEB, we have courses by HRM PEB, we also have courses by CDAC. So um, across board, we are offering academic and professional courses. Over and above that, we also have uh, corporate trainings, which are basically to empower or to continue progressing for those who are already working. And now we have this wing of uh, life skills trainings, whereby we just empower people by giving them what is beyond academics and uh, professionals. And so um, tonight we want to delve into this, appreciating Tibu, um, a medical company that is mobile, that is able to bring um, medical services to your offices and to your homes as you may wish. We also have Enwealth, which is an administration company for pension, uh, pension services. We also have uh, Sky and Beyond. It, it's a company that does a number of services that we'll be telling you more about as we progress. Then we also have CPF, a great administrator in the pension sector, financial services, and many other services that they offer. We have BF Suma that facility, uh, that, that, that uh, uh, focuses on health and, um, and, and in, uh, supplements, other uh, products. And also we have Passion Bees. They are basically, um, into entrepreneurship, um, coaching and mentorship. And finally, we have the career management. This is a company that is focused on also growing the, 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 the corporate world through the HR services. And today, of course, we are happy to add Atara Solutions and Bona Paul will also be telling us what you do from where you come from. And because you joined us before, Grace, I would have said ladies first. I'll also give her an opportunity to take some breath and settle in this house. But we will start with you, Buana Paul. You just tell us who you are, what you do. I saw you do so many things. So I, I, I decided not to be the one to introduce you, but to allow you to just, just tell us who you are, uh, what you're doing, what you've been doing, and the number of years that you've done this so that we get to hear better from the horse's mouth. Bwana Paul, karibu sana. Thank Rida. you. Thank you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, Thank uh, you. Who is this? Thank I you. think, uh, sorry, Bwana Paul. Uh, Christine, you can you can mute whoever that is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Irene. I hope I'm also audible, just checking. If you can hear me, please uh, indicate by the reaction so that- Very audible oh. and very clear. Thank you. Thank you so much, Irene. And I really feel honored to be invited to come to share this particular platform with uh, amazing people, uh, Grace being included, and even the people in this particular room. Um, I consider myself a learner. I learn every day from anyone and from any situation because once you stop learning then uh, it can actually be very dangerous um so who is paul paul is a people enabler um i develop talents currently i'm the chairman of the international ngo human resource roundtable this is an association of human resource uh, practitioners in kenya who decided to come together not work in silos so that we can share knowledge uh, share our insights and just run, learn together. I am also a board member in uh, some organizations. I'm a board director of Care for a Child 
uh, organization, which is a movement or an organization which takes care of children uh, from poor families or from underprivileged families who needs to go for surgeries and especially heart surgeries. So I'm not a doctor, but I decided to volunteer to ensure that we also help the people, the children of Africa. Uh, I'm also the chair of the board of a public school in my county in Kajiado. So I'm very passionate about community engagement and I participate a lot in issues to do with community. Uh, besides that, I'm a human resource practitioner. I'm a strategic human resource leader, but I've also done other things apart from human resources. Uh, including issues to do with the environment. Uh, currently, I head the Liasen uh, group for uh, Greening Loy Tok Tok, which is actually a group of community um, people who actually have come together and at a very critical stage, especially during the uh, climate change. And I've been able to work in different organizations, international organizations for uh, at least more than 15 years, uh, ranging from banking, global media, humanitarian sector, which is always called non-profit making organization, and also I've worked in education issues, uh, governance issues, uh, among others within uh, within Africa and also within the international realm. I am a mentor. I love mentoring and especially high school um, and also young people who are in colleges, universities, and also those ones also who are actually within their professions. Currently, I'm, a, I'm in actually in a cohort uh, with some people that are already seen here in a very important um a program which is called Transcend, which is actually run by the Institute of Human Resource Management. Chris is one of the transcenters who started it. And this is an opportunity to give people, especially the young talents in the human resource, uh, to mentor others and also to be uh, to be to also to undergo mentoring. So those are some of the few things that I'm able to, I, I do. I love also sharing insights and information and also to be taught. And that's why I'm very excited here to share uh, my insights, our ideas, in the future of work, which I feel has already been accelerated, especially because of COVID. I, th I think I want to stop there. Thank you so much. Over to you, Irene. Wow, th thank you so much, um, Paul. You are so many things in one. Uh, when I grow up, <laughs> I want to be like you. But now allow me to invite uh, Madam Grace to, to say hi and tell us uh, more about herself. I know she's also a package by herself, but uh, let's hear from her. Thank you. Irene, thank you. It's an honor really to be here. And uh, good evening, Paul. It's good to see you. You owe me a phone call, but we shall not settle scores here. <laughs> <laughs> right so thank you very much Irene for having me uh, in this platform I am very very honored and I look forward to a very engaging conversation so my name is Grace Nzula a lot of people know me as a moderator of choice I am an HR professional I am also a certified professional mediator and I'm currently undertaking uh, ICF certified coaching uh, to a to upgrade or update in the in the the dreams on in the realization of my dreams, I run a company called the Tara Solutions, which is a HR consulting and training firm. I also run a carpentry school where we teach young people on woodworking. I have, um, uh, gosh, I sit in the board of EPZA, that is Export Processing Zones Authority. I have. Oh, I, I also um, advise a few other boards in the both private sector and a few pri uh, public and private sector. Other than that, I really, really love, uh, I am actually on a mission to change the world through information and I love teaching, I love training, I love mentorship, I love coaching, I love just seeing people flourish. I am one of those people who, if you want to quit employment after 10 years, I will actually, being your HR, encourage you to leave. Not because I want talent to exit the job market, but because I know what uh, exposure means to human beings. And, and just to being uh, able to grow is, is one of the things that give me a lot of joy. And uh, yeah, I talk about... I think we lost Grace. Huh? 
Yeah, Grace, we seem to be losing you. Uh, welcome back. I think I can see your back, but we oh, lost yeah. you. You're back. Okay. Where did you lose me at? Uh, what was that point? Uh, someone remind me where we lost Grace at. Yeah, I think Grace was saying that if you, for instance, have quit your employment and you're looking, she's one person who can actually hold your hand as a HR person. Yeah, actually, I think she left me processing that and telling her she's a very dangerous person to the employer. <laughs> so pick it up from there. <laughs> I am actually one person who encourages employers to, to keep encouraging people to grow. Let new blood come in. It's okay to maintain those who are okay staying. But it is very dangerous to have the same people for over 40 years, uh, unless then it's the technical industry where those are specialized skills. But it is very important for people to put themselves out there because exposure, really. Uh, I was talking to somebody last week who told me they missed out on a job because they have been at a job for 20 years. And guess what that employer told them? That they are looking for somebody who has been around the world a bit has gone through different organizations because what they are bringing on board would be much more exposure than just learning from an organization. So that is from where I am coming from with this point. So it is important that uh, I love seeing people grow. And part of that growth is also change, which is always welcome. I know we want to be very comfortable as employers. I'm an employer myself, and I know I want to hold on to talent as much as I can. But at the same time, I also want to grow. And, and if I'm holding on to talent, I have to make sure that people are moving around. You, you don't just stay doing one particular job forever. It, it's not fair to you. It's not fair to the organization. It is also not fair to the society. So it is important that we move across or upwards, um, whether in the same organization or uh, changing organizations. But I submit, Irene, I can talk forever about mentorship. <laughs> Now, now I understand why you cannot be working for this government. You know, the permanent and pensionable. Uh, <laughs> and I think you can still proceed from there and tell us what has been your experience. I know you are an expert in HR. You are still, uh, of course, doing a uh, consultancy in uh, HR matters and uh, working with many people in the same field. And so um, as the reason, I'm curious also to understand the reason as to why you got where you are at, where you're saying you want people to grow, you want people to change. Uh, and like some of us who would want uh, status quo, you know, I, I get surprised when I hear someone has worked for 10 years in one, in one company, one position, and I wonder how. So I'm also receiving some comfort um, uh, comfort in knowing uh, the, the kind of a person that I am. I think I also move very fast. So you are encouraging me. So how how did you get there? How has it been from the experience that you've gained from the practice? Um, so how did I get where I am? Yes, to the point where you're saying you encourage people to grow. It's not right for you to be in one place for 20 years. I know that's where we are coming from. You know, the government days where you finished form six or you finished your first degree and you were placed and it was permanent and pensionable. And these are the people that we've seen working for the longest. And then uh, listening to you or talking a different language. What has been your journey? What has been your experience? How did we get to where? Now you're saying let people move, let people grow. Um, so I, I, think, I think this is a personality question. I have always been very curious and uh, I am a lifelong learner. I love learning. And the more you learn, the more you discover new things, the more you discover areas where your new talents and skills are, are required. So the fact that I'm a lifelong learner uh, and also I'm a very curious person has made me um, work very closely with very different people. I have been fortunate enough to actually work, uh, everywhere I've worked, I have always uh, worked very closely with the CEO or the board. And therefore that has really, I changed my mindset in terms of uh, how organizations are run, how organizations, or rather how you as an individual need to think to be able to grow. If you look at most entrepreneurs and how they think, they, they, they don't necessarily dwell on problems. They are always looking for solutions, always figuring out how do I solve this solution? How do I make these clients happy? How do I make my employees happy? How do I, you know, there's always something about progression that comes with um 
um, sitting with the CEO or the entrepreneurs of the world. So, and that has always been a trigger for me uh, in the in the sense that I really want to understand how do they do the things that they do. And, and I, I, I actually have been fortunate enough as well to learn from both sides from the, the people, uh, my direct reports, and also from the P, uh, senior reports. So for me, it has been um, my curiosity and also uh, positioning, I can say that. I, I, I love uh, being out there. I love networking. I love meeting with people. I love uh, engaging in, in intellectual conversations. And I also um, used to read a lot. Nowadays, I don't read as much. <laughs> I, I, this is not the kind of mentor or rather the, the kind of mentorship we are looking for. But yes, I used to read a lot. So the more you read, the more you want to, to learn more. The, know, the more you want to, you read the what, you want to know the how, you want to know the when, you want to know the why. So you keep exploring with these things until now you become, you get to a point where it becomes a uh, part of you. You know, so the, the the consistency to want to grow, the consistency to want to do something, the consistency to want to innovate, the consistency to provide solutions, that has always been my thing. And therefore, uh, it gets to a point where I, I stayed in a, an organization for about six, seven years. And by the time I was done with the sixth year, I was like, what else is there for me here? You know, I had grown to the highest rank an HR professional can go to. So my next position was either go to CEO or just exit. And you realize that some organizations don't have the room for you to actually go further. So, uh, and, and, and at the same time, there was no, um, like the, the pleasure of living. So I just decided to go to the management and I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm 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 tired of doing HR. I I have done everything that is to be done in this organization, and therefore, at this point in time, I I I decided, you know what, I need to do something new. And during that conversation, that's how the carpentry school was born. So for me, it's just being uh, curious, being um, a lifelong learner, and also. Um, being in the networks or amidst people who challenge your thinking and you realize how huh? I thought I knew that I do not know. And then you keep knowing and knowing and knowing until you realize that this knowledge you have needs a place to, to be taken, you know? So that has been my thing uh, to answer your question, Irene. Yeah, thank you so much, Grace. And I understand you perfectly so well. I think one of the things I would want to maybe uh, rephrase is the fact that when you say you are not, you, you used to read a lot and nowadays you don't, I think the statement would be you are reading or you are learning differently. Uh, for your information, our participants, Grace uh, runs uh, such forums every Tuesday. God, I even wonder how you do that. And so you may not be sitting in class to read and do exams or sit with a book and read, but I know you are one person who is constantly learning. Whether you are doing this in form of a group or moderation and all that i have also met you most of the times actually i've met you is on a learning platform only that now they are they are packaged yes. differently i i uh, did i must say this eh? allow yes. me for me to clarify this i did what i meant i don't read is i don't read the uh, books the the your normal books I actually still read a lot in preparation for uh, what others need to learn. For example, I, I coordinate uh, conferences at the Institute of Human Resources. That means I do a lot of research, but I can't remember the last time I picked a book to like a, a leadership book. I nowadays just use a, either I'm listening to a podcast or I'm listening to an audio book or I'm doing my own research to be able to know what is happening in the world. What is, what, where are we going? Where are we and where are we going? So that is the learning I do. But uh, I used to read a lot of books. Like I, I can read my favorite book being The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I love that book. And uh, my current or rather recent read was What Got You Here Will Not Get You There. I, I love those books and I could... Um, repeat them over and over but sitting and taking a book like this eh, no back to you irene 
<laughs> yeah, sorry. And for those of us who may be wondering what is happening to Grace Network, I understand she is uh, down at the coast, and so probably there are some variations there. But thank you for your commitment, Grace, and so we understand what exactly you're saying. So we go back to Mr. Paul, and uh, from your experience in the many years that you've been in this practice concerning the human resource and all that, we are coming from, as we know, like I mentioned earlier, um, a time when um, it was you finished high school, maybe form six, or you finished uh, campus and you were placed by the government, you were supported in many ways, and you were given what we were calling the permanent and pensionable terms. And uh, those are the people who really worked very long in the organizations where they found themselves. And of course, if there was growth, it was uh, within still within the government. And so today it is totally different. So um, Mr. Paul, you can tell us what has been your experience in as far as uh, the, the, the job market is concerned, um, the generations that have been there and where we are today, kindly. Thank you so much, um, Irene. Um, indeed, of course, there was that particular time that, um, you know, you'll just actually clear university, college, uh, whether it's KMTC, whether you're in the university, whether you're teaching, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a medical doctor, and you'll just be posted directly to a particular center. It didn't have to do with even the places that you wanted, but you'll be posted. And of course, there was all the fun of uh, being permanent and, and pensionable, pensionable because of the fact that there's job security. Um, and also you have a pension, you have the benefits, uh, but years have moved on. Um, I was not fortunate enough to, to work with the government. I've never worked in the government. I consider it actually more of a privilege because I think I'm so much of a risk taker. I think I only do one particular role for a period of three years, and then I move on, um, which I think has been helpful. And I've been able to work in so many organizations in different sectors. But in that particular, I know a number of friends and I know a number of some of my classmates who got jobs with the government for quite some time. And um, at this particular time, it's becoming, actually, I was having a conversation yesterday with some friends. Some of them were working in the government and times are changing. It's a little bit scary uh, in the sense that they feel quite uncomfortable because they have been so much in the comfort zone that this job has been permanent and, and pensionable. In fact, they used to be called, nowadays actually there's a little bit of a change which may have actually been influenced by perhaps the private sector or maybe the NGO that actually people are calling it more open-ended contracts as opposed to permanent and pensionable. Because when it talks about permanent, it means that you are completely permanent. You're almost actually part and parcel of the assets and the furniture of the organization, including the flowers. And that could be a bit dangerous <laughs> in the sense that you need to be there. And if you're not there, things can happen. A couple of things which have happened is in the sense that, of course, um, within the family level, it has actually provided, of course, families comfort. Uh, there's a warmth, the fact that there's a regular salary, there are benefits um, in that particular case. But in case you look at the current trend, uh, and I think it has actually been influenced globally, there's a trend actually of the government even moving now to contracts. Uh, and I think even to uh, three or five years contract. And of course, for, for various reasons. One, in case even you look at how things are changing, I think things were quite routine. You know, you just pick a job, you do the same role uh, for many years without changing. So you'll do the same, same role for a very long time. Especially with um, uh, artificial intelligence integration, technological innovation. I was looking at actually some of the reports, especially with the World Economic Forum for 2023. Uh, one of the drivers of the business transformation will be technological inno innovation, at least for the next five years. So if you are not techno savvy uh, within the next, from now, within the, in the next five years, of course, if the journey started a bit earlier, then you're almost going to be considered illiterate. Uh, and therefore, the place of te technological innovation must be embedded within all the curriculum, in all the courses that people will be doing, because the issues about data analytics, among others, will be is actually something which will be quite central. Decisions will be made not based on emotions or based on how secure you are within the organization. It will be because of how you add actually value within a particular role. And therefore, there will be need, of course, for people to change as much as possible. I'm very excited, especially with actually Grace saying how she's able to learn uh, and, and getting to different uh, roles uh, within the uh, within the time. And that will be the same thing even within the government. So the issue about permanency, actually, there's an end. There will be an end to permanency that I'm getting to a role and I'll be there. Because in as much as we'll go ahead, even get into open-ended contract, which is called permanent and, and pensionable, there will be so many dynamics um, in the next 
couple of months and years to come that after some time, if you don't do something, you'll be completely irrelevant. You'll be actually completely obsolete. And you'll be uh, the government, even if the government itself will be struggling actually to retain you. In fact, the government will be wondering how comes that you are here now and you're not doing something which is different and therefore continuous learning. And I like actually exactly what even uh, Hallmark uh, uh, Institute of Profession is doing a combination of different things, academic, professional, um, even social skills. You know, I look at my life, some, I, what some of the things I've been there to do, even there to do even courses on parenting, um, issues to do with emotional intelligence, getting into the environment, because that's the, exactly some of the real deals will be there. So looking at exactly what is actually changing uh, socially in life skills, uh, the, for instance, the judiciary, I've just completed a course on professional uh, mediation. The judiciary actually is moving towards alternative justice system. So even if you study law, you can just say, I want just to be a lawyer because even the judiciary actually is so much tired with some of actually the increased cases of uh, of the of the cases in the judiciary. They are moving now towards more emotion, uh, to, towards more mediation, among others. So just, just to, um, to conclude there is that the, the issue about permanency may have been there in the government. Uh, because of certain circumstances which had to be there during that particular time. And the government was a very reliable employer at that particular time, but things are changing from permanency to more short term going forward. Sorry, Paul, no, I, seem, I yeah. seem to be losing you. You are breaking a bit. I don't know. Should I change? I think it's your end, Irene. We can hear him. Oh, perfect. Thank you for confirming that. But but I think he ended up with uh, the, the fact that we are moving from the permanent and uh, pensionable to the short term. I know IHRM and the PSC are very keen now on the performance contracting. And so that is the way to go. I don't know. Um, how do you see it, uh, Grace, in as far as uh, where we are coming from and where we are is concerned? And then we can talk about the future. I mean, I probably would reiterate on what... Uh... Paul has said, uh, where are we coming from? There's a lot of things that have changed, even in terms of the skills needed uh, to succeed in organizations as we speak. Um, so COVID, COVID opened up a whole new horizon on the things that um, are happening or need to happen in organizations. So uh, skills like public speaking have become a need. Skills like emotional intelligence have become uh, a need in terms of uh, the personal development that you need to have to be able to actually succeed in your career and, and especially coexisting. There's a lot of uh, teamwork and co team cohesion that is required in the workplaces. And that can only happen if you as an individual possess some skills that will help you become part of a team and also be able to, uh, uh, to, to do what we call self-leadership. So there's a lot of discovery on people in terms of, uh, there's a lot of need on people understanding who they are. Uh, we are talking about mental health. Mental health has become a thing in the workplaces. We are, we are left, right and center establishing employee support systems, uh, employee wellness. Of course, there's still a bit of uh, things that, or rather, a few areas that haven't changed. Um, we have, we still have quite a number of uh, uh, silent uh, areas in the Employment Act, and 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 probably that also needs to be up, updated or upgraded. But uh, on matters uh, personal development, that is a whole uh, uh, that has changed in in terms of what are the skills that you need to excel in your career and also in your in the workplaces. There's also this right of uh, different um, employers. I mean, I, I, my, my friend's daughter works from home. She's a third year student at the university. She earns 120,000. We have not, she works for some company in uh, India or something. And we are like, my God, you should have seen me in third year. What was I doing in third year? You know, so uh, for, 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 for the, the, there's, the global market has has really helped in terms of uh, opening up uh, opportunities for different people. It's not the same time, the, the same thing that we used to have where you you finish campus. The only places to be employed is either government or banking. It has totally totally changed, and 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 we are I think help. Um, heading into the right direction. Of course, technology has played a big part into the change, uh, but where are we in terms of? Uh, 
uh, uh, workplaces and careers, we are at a very good space where you can explore quite a lot. You actually just need to figure out, wait a minute, I am not able to do this, so I can do this. And there's also the need for people to have multi-skills. Uh, you have heard, myself and Paul, we are certified mediators. Um, that is totally different from what we have been doing as HR professionals. We have changed the way we do things, you know? We the same concepts. If I go for a, for a disciplinary hearing right now, I would do it differently because I understand uh, mediation and also I understand coaching. So when I go there, it is not the same person who would have been five years ago. So there's there's a lot of changes that are coming up, but the change is not necessarily on the what. The change is on the how we do things. Back to you, Irene. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Grace. And I think what we are saying um, is generally to just agree that the, the change is here. I, I think uh, Grace, Paul and I can say we have been, we are coming from the point where we were talking about the future, the future, the future. And today we are looking at the future and we are saying the future is here. But uh, definitely there is also another future. And I think the next question that I would uh, maybe give to Paul is to tell us we are having a shift in terms of generations from X, Y now to Z and alpha. Oh, my God. I, I was seeing some conversation on another page the other day and somebody was asking, how do you deal with this generation? And so probably, uh, Paul, in the same uh, aspect of your experience and uh, having practice and where you are now, uh, uh, how how do we integrate? Because I know we still have the Gen X uh, still in the market. Uh, of course, probably senior in terms of age, number of years that they have worked, the experience and all that. But now they are having to deal with uh, a whole new generation. How do we integrate? How do we work together? And how do we get to understand when they come with their dynamics? Thank you so much, um, Irene, for that question. And... Um... Indeed, as you have mentioned, the future that we were talking about, the, the future of work and the future of doing things differently was accelerated by COVID. COVID was not a very good thing because some of us actually really uh, were ravaged. But uh, however, <laughs> actually it really helped us in accelerated the future of work and actually it brought forth on how things need to be done. And we can actually see now a mix of different generations, not even actually at the workplace, but even actually even in, within business. As you go to the academic realm, also you find the same, same things. You know, the lecturers are all from different uh, uh, generations. And even the students who are coming, who are doing actually master's programs, who are doing undertaking P, uh, PhD programs are from different actually generations. So in terms of how things actually are working at the moment, is, um, and I think Grace has actually mentioned something very interesting, which actually my daughter is doing now. Things actually have changed completely, you know, in the sense that um, while before you had to wait until you complete your studies in colleges and the universities that you to, so that you start work, um, things are changing. You can actually start from any time. You can actually start from uh, first year. Uh, my, my daughter who has just, has just finished uh, high school is already actually in fashion design already. Uh, and she's actually joining college in September. So th things are changing in terms of how careers even are going to be defined. Uh, then the other thing that I just want to mention in terms of the generations in different places is that um, I think uh, people used to be defined by the number of years that actually they have spent in a particular place. They have worked in a particular area and actually they those particular hours of long service, you know, five years, seven years. Um, there's a little bit of a change in this, uh, in the sense that uh, the reward now and recognition now come in terms of the value that you add um, in the organization. What value do you add? You know, does it translate in terms of the profits? Uh, does it tr translate in terms of a new product, a new service, improvement of customer service, reduction of, of customer service uh, complaints? Um, it also leads in terms of the new skills that you bring, the exposure actually that you have in, in the organization. I One of the things which actually is there is that um, experience is no longer actually defined by the number of years that actually you you are in a particular role, but the value and the and the expertise actually that you bring on board, uh, including the learning that actually you bring. Um, so the other thing that I just want to mention, even the concept of mentoring is changing, you know, and, and I'm very happy that especially like Grace is saying that as she's going into coaching, things are completely changing in the sense that um, it, it doesn't have to be a more experienced person or the person who has been there in a very long time, 
to to mentor necessarily to mentor the uh, another person it could be reverse mentoring a younger person yeah. i get a lot of mentoring in my house from my young people my my children they actually some can, can look at what i'm actually i'm using and they're able to change in fact my mentoring in it has completely been accelerated because of the people around me i like actually engaging so many or so much actually with the young people because i learn so much about actually what is happening and then in the same thing issues to do for instance about wisdom emotional intelligence the people who have been there longer can actually teach they can actually share uh insights because for instance, issues to do with mental health is real. I think Grace has actually talked about that. And we cannot ignore your hearing situations where people actually are going into depression because of mental health. And therefore, the wisdom, um, uh, which is perhaps with people a bit more older, um, the emotional intelligence helps in telling you there's also delayed gratification. You know, that's also is another issue in terms of even um, talking about generation. It's not only about money. It's not about aggregation of your roles and promotions. Also, there's also the wisdom of the society. There's the wisdom of the family. That also is very important that actually you, you get there. The other thing which is quite important in terms of looking at those particular generations, there's an emergence uh, issue which was not there a long time ago about diversity and inclusion. I think before it was more about the older people, take all the roles, make all the decisions, chair meetings. Things have completely changed instead that you have to consider diversity and inclusion from gender, from uh, demographics, uh, from academics, from professionals. Mm -hmm. And this is where actually now we have different generations coming. In fact, the most stable organizations and societies in the world, which are doing very well, are the ones actually which embrace diversity and inclusion, which actually think about the young people, the old people, the people in the in the middle. They bring something within the society. They bring uh, some sense of, of sanity. Um, and it's not only about just academics. There are many other things which may not be mentioned that actually, like, including uh, issues like etiquette, you know, um, some of the things which have been disappearing, like, thank you, you know, when you go for a business lunch, how do you behave? You know, do you bring four or five people to a business lunch uh, who have not been invited? <laughs> you know, um, how do you, what, how do you hold those particular spoons during that particular time? It's a new concept which actually cuts across generations. Let me just stop there, Irene. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because I know I, I will meet Grace very soon in another meeting and we'll be talking about bringing 10 people who are not invited or registered in a business meeting. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I, I have my colleague uh, Dalton Nunda. I, he's, 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 he's a, I think a generation behind me and is one of the people who keep me, keeps me on tabs in terms of uh, learning. Of course, I have Derek, I have Christine. I don't know whether Josphat is in the house. Dalton, I know you have some questions on your head. If you can check on your chat that you'll be uh, throwing some of them to uh, Madam Grace and Mr. Paul so that they can help us to answer that. But as we progress, I think, uh, Grace, uh, we are talking about the generations and their, uh, their dynamics. Maybe you can speak to us uh, or the generations and tell them uh, because definitely I look at employment from two perspectives, where you are self-employed and also where you are employed by someone else. What are the employers looking for in the current, in, in this day and age, in terms of um, when you're applying for a job, why, what would make you, you know, um, uh, uh, what would put you ahead of your competition and what may, will make you, even after securing that job, what will make you grow even faster than your peers? What are employers looking for? Right, that's a very important uh, question. But before I answer, let me uh, probably give you an example. Um, in the board I sit, I sit in a public board, and uh, sometimes I probably am among. I'm probably the youngest in that board, and <laughs> today we, I'm in Mombasa for a board meeting or rather a board activity, and our chairman was not able to make it today, so he just uh, sent the corporation secretary and said Grace to chair the meeting for the whole day. So I've been a chair in the meeting, and everyone else is older than me, so <laughs> it's not necessarily about age for these things, but the dynamics are changing. That would not happen if uh, it was some errors uh, that we were in. But what are employers looking for? That's a very, very good question. We have actually done a whole webinar on, on that and probably that you can share our YouTube channel for people to go and look uh, at that. But uh, in a nutshell, they are looking for very simple things, to be honest. You as a person, Paul has alluded to 
saying a thank you, saying good morning. There's a bit of humility that employers are looking for. But number one, they need kujituma. I hope we are all Kenyans. Employers are looking for people who can kujituma. You know, I, I really don't have to tell you what to do. You know, I we had a situation last week. Um, oh, somebody uh, wrote an email and said that, they you remember the blackout, that they cannot come to work because they do not have water. So they're not able to shower to come to work. So they will just start work then. And I was like, my God, who are these? You know, like, can you, like, if water does not come for the next seven days, it means that you're not going to shower. That is such a huge excuse for not coming to work. Whether this was properly written in a beautiful email. <laughs> so, and, and for me, I was like, it, I, I know that can happen. But my question is, if water does not come for a whole week, you're not going to come to work and you're not going to shower. You know, <laughs> so what we're looking for is for mutu jitume tu, kidogo tu, hakuna maji. Find a solution, my friend. Find a solution. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was fortunate enough to work for a very uh, serious businessman that I still <laughs> um, appreciate to date. This man had two rules, or rather three rules. One, if it was not written, it was not said. His favorite words were, put it in black and white, okay? That means that we all needed to learn about communication skills. So for him, and by the way, if you took for him something and he did not sign, you will go to a board meeting at a Kumi. You will be left there wondering, my friend, you approved. You <laughs> approved. <laughs> you know, so that. And then, um, I, the, so communication skills is one of the things employers are looking for the ability to actually express yourself and the ability to find solutions. By the way, in fact, make my work easier. If you work for Atara Solutions, I have brought you into the organization because there's a part that you need to help. Otherwise, I should go ahead and work for myself, right? Or rather, work, do everything for myself. So if you're coming into the organization, what skills are you bringing on board? Employers want people who can make their lives a bit easier. That is why that you're holding that role. So make mm. sure that you, instead of being a stressful point, you are actually a solution point. That is actually one of the things that puts you ahead of um, competition because you, you're able to, to move, you're able to look at situations and uh, see solutions. The other things employers are looking for is an, a mindset of um, 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 growth. You know, we want somebody who is able to see, wait, here is where we are. This is where we can get, and this is how we can get there. Because one of the ways we are helping manage the, the, all these intergenerationals uh, in the workplaces is by seeking for, uh, we have brainstorming sessions. We want feedback from the people. We want engaged employees. We do not want to, uh, to go and look for consultants who will come and do uh, their own things and then say that we have brought you solutions. No, we want people who are able to give feedback. Even when a consultant comes to collect information, we want to know, what 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 do you think can be done for this organization to actually become better so we need a growth mindset in the organization we need people who are able to express themselves and also give solutions to um to, to, to the organizations that you're working for. The other thing that we are looking for are those skills that we talked about. Emotional intelligence. We are looking for people who understand their craft. You really don't have to know everything. We're also looking for good attitude. You know, Irene, I can tell you, I interviewed somebody last week on Friday. And one of the reasons she said that she does not want the job is because the job in, is in a place where uh, access has a bit of mud. And they're like, how do I get, be, how will I be getting to work? And you're like, I thought you were looking for a job. You know, so there's a whole mindset, like um, there's a whole idea of understanding. Where are you? You know, I, I, I'm not saying that you need to work in a place that you do not want to work to. It is okay to have standards. It's fine. But I, I disagree with sitting at home because you are choosing the road to which you go to work on. I am refusing to, to, for you to sit at home because um, what is the other thing that we normally say? Oh, yeah, the people who quit and say that that organization is very toxic. Yes, there are organizations that can be toxic. And of course, if they are affecting your mental health, they are not worth it. But I, I, I think I look at it from very different perspectives. Where are you? Because most of us, sometimes most of the organizations we work for, we are working for them because we have bills to pay. 
So how, what are you doing with yourself to make sure that you stop working for organizations that are, you, you're only doing for, uh, to pay bills? Because you need to upgrade yourself. Be a lifelong learner. Be, be a lifelong, like, um, receive feedback and be a, in a position to give feedback. Some of these things are the, um, probably what we are looking for in employees. Now, this is the one thing that I want to put here, Irene. If you're applying for a job, please stop forwarding your email, your, your application to 10 people. Like, you know, I have to scroll down all the other forwards in organizations that you have applied for to actually find your CV. In all honesty, by then looking for a job is a full-time job. You need to be very strategic. You know, I, I have been sitting around politicians and I'm telling you, these guys can plan. I tell you, by the time you see some of this, hey, they think from end to end. Oh, yeah, by the way, the other thing that employers are looking for is somebody who can think through ideas. You know, there are people who, like, I, I have been mentoring some HRs, and I keep saying, if we have, we, we, are, we have advertised for a position, think through. What is next? It means that we are going for interviews. What is next? It means we are going for, to onboard. What is next? It means we are doing one, two, three. What is next when those people are not able to join those organizations? Think through the whole uh, process because we want you to think strategically, but we also want you to think operationally. So you need to see it through so that you can be able to predict what does my boss want? There's a very good course that we offer called managing up and managing across. You need to be able to, to put yourself in a position and think, what does my employer want and what does my colleague want? And also now be clear about what you want as an individual. Because if you can't tie the three, I tell you, you will thrive. You know, I can talk forever. You know, I get paid to talk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I hear you and I'm even wondering, oh my God, I, I just put three, you know, I don't know, the, 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 the two of you are just, uh, uh, your hands are so loaded. I feel like telling you one thing I always tell one of my professors by my right that uh, I need his head, you know, I need your head, I need your head. What I mean is, is that I need him to download the whole head to us and to give it to us before he's unable to speak any further because he's also aging. And uh, Grace, we, we need your head. I don't know how we are going, where we're going to put it. And uh, also Mr. Paul, but I'm liking what you're saying. Uh, somebody said we use uh, English because we have uh, people across the nations in this forum. Kujituma means being proactive. You need to be that one person who can see things before you're even told. You don't need to be told. Jitume. I, I have one of my staff who keeps saying, uh, if you tell him to evaluate someone, he says, Anakawa kujituma. But ideally what we are saying, you need to be proactive before we get into that trouble you need to have uh, seen it be ahead you need to have diagnosed it and you also need them to have come up with solutions you need to be that one person who doesn't need to be uh, uh supervised hands-on i think uh, i've tried translated uh kujituma that's what basically it means and many more other things we we run a program that we call employability skills it's a whole i know what grace is trying to compress in one or two minutes it's a whole course by itself and so you can check us out at our website at our uh, social media handles and of course we'll be sharing with you a link for our life skills group where you can join and also our youtube channel where you can be able to see some of these things that we've been able to do, basically targeting life skills, including emotional intelligence, financial wellness, and all, and, and, and such programs. And so, Mr. Mr. Paul, we are living in the days of technology. And I know, um, like I said again, ourselves, the generation before we used to say the future will have this, the future will have this. But now we are living in that future, and there is that concern, is the technology taking away the jobs from people? Is AI overtaking the people and replacing them? What is the situation and what are we foreseeing? Sorry, yeah, thank you. It actually, indeed, um, information technology, or- is, I'm not sure we can hear you, Mr. Paul. Can you hear me now? Oh, cool, thank you. Yeah, um, uh, I think I had actually mentioned that according to some reports, especially with the um, uh, the World Economic Forum 2023, um, the intention is for technology innovation to transform businesses, you know, to make them better. Uh, it's not actually actually to take anybody's job uh, completely. So um, technology is not taking, it's not going to take people's job. What actually is happening is automation of these particular jobs. 
is automation of some of the uh, uh, skills, some of the uh, duties which are more repetitive, to make um, things actually more accurate, uh, to ensure that there is actually accurate data, reliable data, which can, can actually help leaders to make decisions. So the more people actually uh, embrace technology, the better for themselves, because um, there's some actually who said, can't remember actually the name, uh, the illiterate of the 21st century is somebody who cannot unlearn, uh, learn and relearn. So if you can actually not unlearn what you used to know and you think it's the best, then it becomes difficult. And, and technology is providing that particular space for people actually even to learn more and actually embrace automation and to pick things like, for instance, data. Because businesses actually are run by decision making. Um, in case they are business, actually uh, business people around here, they realize that you need facts. Uh, you don't need to be, it doesn't need to be run by emotions. Like for instance, today people are very happy. Uh, what does that actually happiness uh, transfer to? Issues to do, for instance, like in, in terms of employment, engagement, employment, uh, employee experience. It's about the data, you know, doing surveys and using data uh, to make decisions. Uh, compensation and benefits are driven by by data information so you need to benchmark even when it comes to salaries so this is all about actually picking new skills and this is all about actually technology which is coming in so it actually makes life much better it makes decision making more more factual it actually reduces the the, the errors which used to be there and actually it actually leads to fun because as you go to the boardroom as you go for leadership meetings you are actually doing your presentation using data, using analytics, using trends. So actually technology is improving how things used to be to be done. It's actually improving research. Um, now there's actually more the element of research and development. As you go to make your presentation in a, in a, in a leadership bo uh, uh, boardroom, it's, it's all about what, what have you researched from where, from which particular credible sources. And this is all about technology. You need to use certain such, uh, such uh, engines, engines so, so that actually you get this particular information. So what I'll actually, I'd like to say is that technology is improving. It actually is actually creating more roles. It's just like even the era of, for instance, like uh, environment, climate change, the re renewable energy is actually creating more opportunities than ever before. So what I, I just want just to finish is by saying that technology is improving our lives. For instance, looking at even issues to do with mental health, issues, for instance, to do with uh, digital tools that people are using uh, to logging and getting information and even actually conducting uh, medical professionals is improving. Uh, so you don't have necessarily to drive from one point to another, but actually you can use the apps to make the life easy and even actually to make the, uh, the turnarounds even much better. So technology actually is even improving even how we, we make things even easier. Turnaround times uh, are easy when you use technology. So the, 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 the earlier people actually would embrace technology and not see it as um, resist it uh, religiously and making it at, at, as, as an enemy, the more our services, our customer service, our business transformation, our products and services, look here now, we are here actually virtually 82 of us uh, using technology. Uh, before we would have been thinking about how do we drive to Harambe Avenue? How do you drive to Westlands with a traffic jam like today, looking at, for instance, what is happening to go and actually attend uh, a, such a productive and engaging session like today? So you can actually see the value of technology. Online training, you know, before it was like, oh my God, you know, I'm looking at, for instance, like IHRM, and I'm sure even still Hallmark Institute of um, 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 Institute is also embracing. Before you had to think about, I need to get out of work, drive, get into a matatu, go all the way and attend training. training. But now there's online training. There's no excuse anymore uh, oh. for to attend training if you don't go for online. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much, Paul. And I think just to emphasize on what we are saying, I remember I'm, I'm reminded of uh, when the first case of COVID was uh, diagnosed in Kenya. And uh, uh, it was precisely a, a Sunday afternoon. We came from church and uh, getting home, we were getting to the news and we hear COVID is here in Kenya. And like before, when we were a bit playing safe. And uh, of course, there are so many institutions that were closed. I was still working in a, in a learning institution. And I remember the immediate thing that happened is that colleges were closed. 
yeah and we were literally sent home and what that meant is that i will never forget we got into the next day and it was what we called uh the decision making monday it was meetings after meetings now you've been literally shut down how do you survive um and what i wanted to say with that is that uh, we've seen now even uh, the level where even the the examining bodies the next the casnebs the hrm peb they have embraced technology. Today, you don't even have to show up there to do your exams. So when it comes to learning, now it's very open. Most of our courses actually, including academic and professional courses are offered online. So there is no excuse. You can learn over your, you know, you can learn within your lunch hour. You can learn in the evening. We do classes at 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. like we are doing today. And so there's basically no excuse as to why you cannot advance yourself in terms of career. And so uh, Dalton, I don't know whether you have any questions that you'd want to ask verbally, but I'm seeing questions that are coming through. Somebody was saying if Grace could uh, emphasize on the question of, you know, forwarding a CV that has been sent to several organizations. And I think one of the things, uh, Madam Grace, that was coming through my mind was, uh, imagine an employer seeing a CV that you have sent to five organizations. Uh, what will be going through their mind is you, even if I was to give you that job, I am so sure you're not going to be with us for the next probably six months or one year, because most likely you will be looking for the next, uh, you know, organization that is going to give you better terms. So it ends up showing the kind of a person that you are. You cannot, you know, we would not want to invest in you in terms of training you. Um, even before we do the orientation, you will be, you know, one leg in and another leg out. And so, Madam Grace, as you pick the other few questions, maybe you can talk to us about uh, we are living in the days of what we are calling the economic um, dynamics. Can a salary be enough? And if not, we are talking about side hustles. How do we balance as employees and how do we accommodate that as employers? Grace. Okay. Um, I had raised my hand up, Irene, because I thought Jay Kagai had raised a very, very uh, important question. Uh, he was saying that uh, transition is not easy. Well, how do you deal? Uh, you have invested heavily to advance your career, to expand your horizons, but you feel those who should be lifting you and cock block, clock blocking like you are a threat. And um, I, I, I think I want to, to deal with this one, Irene, because this is a situation of the mindset that we have right now. This, Mr. Kagai, you need to change your mindset. Don't wait for people to put you somewhere. Make sure that you're putting yourself in spaces where opportunities are. Okay? You don't wait for your employer to notice you. You don't wait for, uh, for another organization to notice your work. You put yourself in places where there are opportunities that as you get noticed, people will notice your value and not necessarily any other thing. I don't know whether I'm making myself clear. So the first thing that you need to do is change your mindset. Fine, you're in this situation where you have invested in yourself. What are the opportunities available? People aside. And then who else are you looking for? Who are the people in your circle there's something i like referring to called the circle of excellence my circle of excellence and what i recommend to you as as you grow in your career would be you need to have a mentor you need to have a mentor who will help you deal with your mindset you need to have a coach who will help you unlock your potential you also need to network with people in the field that you want to go to you need to upgrade and update yourself, not necessarily by certificates, but just by, by being able to talk to people and picking information that will help you uh, uh, step on to the next level. Number four, change your mindset. You do not have to be in that organization only. You can look for jobs as you balance off with the organizations that you're in. Look for opportunities that will help you grow. So this thing of being locked because my employer does not, does not, my friends, do you know how many employers we are in this country? Please change your mindset. I, I urge you, change your mindset. And I'm not only, I know I'm addressing quite a number of people. Thank you for being bold enough to ask that. Please don't look at your, your superior or the person you're reporting to or the people who are supposed to give you opportunities as the people who are standing in your way. It is you who is standing in your own way. Change your attitude, change your mindset, look for opportunities that present themselves. I was very happy when Paul at one point brought her, her, his daughter 
to a networking dinner. And I was like, this is the kind of people we want in this society because these girls came in and I remember Paul just saying, my daughter has just got an internship by the virtue of being here. I know not all of us have Paul's and Paul as dads, but that is, I, I, I see young people. I have had, I, I had a friend who came from Naivasha the day we had an event at uh, Nokras. Do you know, as soon as we sent out that flyer, she had been paying 1000 shillings every month so that she can be able to attend that networking session. And I'm telling you, she came, she networked, she found a lawyer, she was by, about being an IHRM member because she did not know a lawyer who would certify her documents. She came, IHRM was in the house, they, she was taken through the process, she met a lawyer who actually offered to do this thing for free. And that has changed her mind. In fact, after that uh, networking session, she's always like, Grace, I have an interview next week, I have an interview tomorrow. It has opened her horizon. So I would suggest that you make sure that you are establish a circle of excellence who, who are in your personal board. You need to be very strategic about the people you're, you're hanging out with. Number two, change your mindset because opportunities come for the prepared. How prepared are you mentally, physically, psychologically for these new opportunities? Because no one will come for you. You have to go for those opportunities yourself. You've ever heard of the phrase that power is never given, power is taken. Make sure that even if you do not know, try and get out there, learn, you know, ask people. Even today, I can tell you, I still will call a few people and say, where, how do we do one, two, three? I have just written a book here. What got you here will not get you there. You'll get an opportunity. But my friend, for you to grow, your CV right now will only get you that opportunity. But for you to move to the next level, there are things that you need to put in place for you to get there. Irene, you asked about a uh, job application. Now, yes, um, you need to take applying for jobs very seriously. The casualness I see, and I'm like, my God, why can't people just strategically position themselves, even if it's an email you're reading? Do you know there are emails we read and we're like, oh my God, we do not have that position, but we want to have this person at an interview. And, and for us, because we are recruiters, for us, we are like, oh my God, you interview somebody and you pack them at the back of your mind because you have seen talent and you would want to put that talent somewhere. Such that when people, Irene reaches out and says, Grace, I'm looking for a receptionist. I'll be like, there's this lady we interviewed. She was very good, but we could not afford her. That is how opportunities are received. But unfortunately, job seekers don't read the advertisements. And you know, right now we are we are recruiting using an ATS. ATS is automated tracking system. It is a like Paul has said, we are changing the way we do things. Technology is making our work easier. So take read, read. If the subject line, you know, the, the, the other day we were recruiting for like 10 positions for one organization. They're opening a new branch. And it was very simple. Right on the subject line, the position that you are applying for. Now imagine I have received a thousand emails. Who do you think I will open? You think the one that has forwarded 10 times is what I will look? I will not even open your application. I can tell you that for a fact. So the ATS will give me a summary. Then I will go and look for, for, for what I wanted, uh, a summary that has been presented. Then I will check and look now, how do I make sure that this person fits into the culture of this organization? So if you are a job seeker, please take that assignment seriously. Make sure that you read through what, what does the people want? Is my CV able to get me this position? And what you need to do is make sure that once you get an opportunity for an interview, make sure you shine. Whether written, whether oral, make sure you're acing it. They would rather not give you the opportunity because you're too expensive. But make sure that you have wowed them such that if they ever get that opportunity again, you'll be the first person to be called. Irene asked me to speak about a, a, a side hustle. I, I, okay, we are living in a point where the economy is really demanding a lot of us, a lot from us. Now, I normally say you have 24 hours in your day, right? And um, I was actually coaching somebody the other day who was like, Grace, how do you do all these things? How do you, how? Because they have just gone into a, to to entrepreneurship. They have different um, jobs that they are doing and they are like, my God. I cannot even satisfy all my clients. And I keep saying, you have 24 hours in a day. If you're employed from eight to seven o'clock because you, they, there's commute uh, time, so maybe from six to 7 p.m., you get home, you need to refresh. You need to spend at least two hours doing something else that is able to give you income. You also need, for example, um, my house girl sells porridge. Do you know what she does? She wakes up at 4.30, 
she sells porridge and uh, chapati. So she wakes up at 4.30, she kandas her unga, or she rolls, uh, she makes the dao. Sorry, I had forgotten we have done Kenyans. So she makes the dao, and then she she rolls the chapati. You know how we, we roll before we start uh, rolling the ones for the pan? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. But yeah, you understand what I'm going with. So the, you do the dough, then you make those tiny circles, then she lives there. Then because my children wake up at around 5.30 to get ready for school, she'll do that uh, as she makes her, their breakfast. So that by the time they are waking up, she's done with the breakfast, it's on the table. So if they, the kids are coming out to come and have their breakfast, she's already cooking her chapati. Then she'll be done. My kids will be out by 6.20 to go to, to school. And then, sorry, I'm, I'm tethering with my phone. Can you hear me? That's all yes, you can we hear can. Me? yes, we can. Yes, we can. There was, yes. was a call coming. So, right. So, um, she, 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 then we leave um, at around 8.00. Personally, I leave the house between 7.30 and 8. So by the time I leave, I leave with her. She'll go and hook her, her porridge and her chapati. And by 9 o'clock or 10, she's back in the house. She'll do her chores, you know, clean the house, do the laundry, whatever, whatever she needs to do. Then at 4 p.m., she'll go again round there. She goes to look for, for Sukumawiki or vegetables. She'll go and collect the money from the people who have not paid her. And my friend, I am telling you, she's the happiest woman I have now. In fact, she was just saying, my, I am praying for you. So for her, she has decided to use her 24 hours in a different way. You know, she'll make sure that she's asleep by 10 so that she's able to wake up at 4.30 and be able to fit everything in her, in her day. If you sleep at 10 and wake up at 4.30, my friend, you're an adult, you have covered all the hours you need to cover. So it is just about timing. It is just about uh, managing yourself and also um, supporting the people because I know the employers who will not allow you. But I can tell you if you're an employer in this call, let people grow. All you need to do is make sure that they are, in fact, I keep reminding her, by the other day I come and find my work not done, I will close your shop. <laughs> <laughs> and when I say that, she's like, okay, I understand I missed out on a spot, I will do better. Because both of us, by the the happier she is, the more happy, the more comfortable I am, I travel a lot. So if she's happy, I'm happy, the kids are happy, and we're moving. So if you're looking for a side hustle, please make sure that you get one. It is okay to have a side hustle. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grace. And of course, the emphasis that we have 24 hours in a day, uh, some of us will prefer to sleep more. Uh, others will be found uh, watching Afro cinema uh, that uh, earns value in a different way. But then looking at it, I hope uh, for those who have joined to learn, we are already picking um, ideas, by the way, because like, for example, when you're coming to Hallmark to learn, most likely you will not get study leave from your employers. You will be learning during your free time and you are supposed to organize yourself to be able to do that. Uh, somebody was asking, how do you ensure that employees are proactive and work under minimum supervision? I think uh, Grace has just ended it at a very, a very interesting uh, point, which I would want also to pick up uh, from is that uh, if you are proactive, there are rewards that come with that. Of course, the reward system, uh, which means there are opportunities that come for you. I personally am one person who doesn't like micromanaging. I just get tired of just having to, you know, uh, micromanage or supervise you like hands-on. I, I, it just uh, takes away my energy. So what are some of the ways that you help people to be able to, or encourage people to be able to be proactive and work with minimum supervision? Of course, one of them is putting systems in place. You know, with system, you're able to, uh, to tell. Somebody was supposed to do one, two, three things and they didn't do it. So the system will definitely tell. Um, of course, we are dealing with uh, human beings and the, the nature of most human beings is we always ask, what is the least I can do and get paid the most? That is just naturally who human beings are. It is, of course, get takes us back to the theory X and Y, but where you find that most individuals don't really want to work, but they want to earn. How does that happen? So putting systems in place, of course, you cannot avoid uh, supervising people. I think I get to come to terms that it's one of the things that you have to do. And uh, I normally say that is what also managers are paid for, to supervise and to push other people. But then, of course, uh, if you're a proactive person, what uh, rewards are there for you? Of course, opportunities to grow, opportunities to, you know, make your own extras and make your own money. 
and you become even happier. Of course, training, I mentioned something or a program that we run that we call it um, a B, uh, employability skills. That is one of the gospels that I preach a lot today. And we also have another program that we call Behaving Like the Owner. Um, when I bring on board uh, people into my organization or wherever I am working, I normally tell them, I'm just giving you a platform. By the way, it's an opportunity I opened for you. But from there, it is either you're hired or you're firing yourself. If you mismanage your work, if you don't perform, you fire yourself, probably you will fire a few, three more people. But remember, because I'm the one who brought you, I'll be the very last person to leave. But if an employee of Hallmark calls Hallmark or makes uh, Hallmark not grow, it means we all stagnate. But if you, you are proactive, the, the Kujituma that Grace is talking about, it means the organization grow and you also grow with it. So opportunities that come there are about. But so looking at, you know, individuals, we're asking ourselves, can you be able to look for opportunities without being told? I'm so impressed by your, your house girl, Grace. Most of the house girls, what do they do? They, they finish work by 10. But what do they do with the rest of the day when they're alone in the house? That's what I was saying. They watch Afro cinema. I don't know whether Dalton, you have any questions on your end that you wanted to ask uh, uh, verbally. Uh, Christine, kindly share the life skills uh, page uh, link for those who would be willing to join for more information and to uh, be kept uh, updated with what is coming up next. Remember, we are saying, yes, certificates are good. Academic and professional courses are good. But what will make you grow faster or even sustain what you already have is what we are calling life skills trainings. And this is one of the things that we do, at least on uh, generally once a month or once every two weeks. Dalton, any questions from your end? Mm, yes, and thank you very much, Madam Irene, for the opportunity to pose a question. So one of the questions I have tonight is the question of uh, how the newer generation of employees can connect best uh, with the older generation at the workplace because we're having um, different mindsets and uh, people observing, um, people having a different way of looking at things. So uh, kindly, Madam Zula, if you can, uh, maybe you can give us your view on that. I want Paul to take that one because he actually has young adults. I want to answer the question on public service because I chair a, 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 a HR committee in uh, public service. So Paul can take the question on uh, on the multi generation. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the question. I, I think the first thing that I would like just to say is it's very important to have open and uh, respectful communication. Um, one of the things which actually the Gen Z. Sometimes they always feel, like, especially the young generation, they are they ignored, eh? and uh, the fact that they are young. Um, sometimes people feel like they have nothing to offer, and there's so much that's to offer. So the importance of uh, respectful and uh, and open communication. The other thing is just about active listening. Uh, sometimes I think what happens is that uh, people always listen so that they can react immediately, uh, not being there completely in that particular space being empathetic uh, completely to listen affirmation is quite key in fact one of the key areas in terms of like mental health is even just affirmation uh, and telling people you know that was good uh, excellent work uh, and starting even with the positives the positive vibes uh, completely help uh, the other thing is actually just even in terms of of mentorship you know i think i think you just mentioned about not only the mentorship in terms of like upward for the people who are more experienced but looking for opportunities to be even to for reverse mentoring by the young people. They have so much to offer. They can solve problems within a very, very short time if they are given an opportunity actually to talk about it. And then there is something else about delayed gratification. You know, things don't have to be done overnight. In fact, nothing actually succeeds overnight. In as much as we are saying that these things have accelerated the future of work, it's very important to actually to have de delayed gratification. And that's where the place of wisdom from the society, drawing wisdom from people, inclusion, involving people in conversation is, is very, very important. And then um, definitely learning is ongoing, you know, picking soft skills, joining Toastmasters, for instance, to pick communication 
Rotary to learn even issues about uh, humanitarian uh, areas is very important. In fact, some of the connections and opportunities that people get most is when they volunteer, being visible in some of these particular spaces, in, in Rotary, in Toastmasters, in community engagement, and not always, and, and I think Simon Sinek said, when you show up, don't show up to get, show up to give more. And then people actually will pick it more. They realize that you are there. And this is very important even for the younger generation that they can actually pick. And, and, and even for the older generation, honestly, giving people an opportunity, the younger people an opportunity to shine, to be visible, to do job rotation. And then just finally, as I'm closing it because of time, being there to speak the business language, don't concentrate to say that I'm IT, I'm human resources and marketing. When you're given an opportunity to give remarks, talk on behalf of the organization, speak the business language, pick the business jargon. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, uh, Grace, please take it on and answer the questions that you're answering. And then to it, you can add this question of uh, how does one get to know the right career and the right course to take? Okay. Um, so for, 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 for jobs in public service, public service uh, process is a strict level of processes. Um, if you have a, for example, if there's an advertisement for HR position, please read through the requirements because during uh, shortlisting, the first thing we use to knock uh, people out is the minimum requirement. So if the job requires you to have a master's degree, make sure you have a master's degree. If the job requires you to have um, a leadership course that spans not less than four, four weeks, these are leadership courses that are designed by government. Uh, There's some that are offered in KSG, uh, that is a senior management course. We call it SMC, or you can have attended uh, like uh, leadership courses for a whole week that go for four weeks. So you can join like the SAMIs and all those leadership programs that are sold differently, so long as they are four weeks. So if you've been applying for jobs and you have not been meeting the minimum requirements, I can tell you for a fact, you will not even be given an eye for for an interview so the basics like for government they're very they're strictly for processes what they put out in the ad is actually what we use to shortlist then from shortlisting we look for i, I mean we come up with different criteria. so the first criteria would be the degree and the and the 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 either the degree or the master's. If you meet those ones, then you can be able to, we look at now experience. If the experience says that it's nine years with three that are in leadership positions, make sure that you have the three in leadership because that is another way that we used to knock you out because uh, you can advertise for a position and get 500 applications. So for you to be able to draw down to the 10 that you can interview, there's a lot of work that goes into that. So make sure that you meet the basic minimum uh, for government to be able to be given an opportunity. And of course, prayer. I, I believe that you need to pray, in all honesty, because I'm also a believer in purpose. You are where you are supposed to be. So wherever it is that you are in your life, you need to know that you're where you are supposed to be. And at that point, there's a purpose you're serving. And I can tell you for a fact, as, as long as you're not done serving that purpose for whatever it is that you're doing, you will not get to the next level. So you need to make sure that you keep praying that God, uh, show me your purpose. Let me know what else I need to do at this point that I am in because I need to move to the next level. So if you don't pray, I think it is time you also dedicate that to prayer. And uh, as much as that, then include networking in that part because that's the only way you know when these positions are coming, yeah? Uh, so that then you're aware of when they are starting, when they are closing, have they been re-advertised? What is happening in those institutions that you want to be employed at? That is what I can say about public service. The other question was on what? Remind me the other question. How to know the right career and uh, match it with the right course. And I think um, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, of course, that relates to purpose and all that. You can pick that up. But there was also a question that uh, was asking about uh, who you know, uh, of course, determines the job that you get. I think you've also touched on that. Networking is very important, but is it all? But also someone, uh, allow me to add you this, Grace, someone who is asking to kindly elaborate on permanent and casual terms of engagement in a private industry 
Um, I hope you'll be able to handle that as well. Okay. Um, so in terms of skills and what you need to study, I, I, I'm not your normal uh, career advisor. So I will say this. For me, I'm normally driven by passion. For me, I normally am driven by interest. What do I want to be? You know, what is exciting me right now? What is the job market saying about this? So first of all, you need to check with yourself. What do I really want to do? Let me tell you something about uh, doing what you enjoy. Even in the workplaces, we will pick that you actually enjoy your job and we will be happy to give you responsibilities because we can see that you enjoy the job that you're doing. So will I tell you that to go and study journalism just because? No, I will not. I did journalism and I'm an HR currently, you know. Um, sometimes in terms of uh, basic education, sometimes all you need is a paper to get you somewhere. So whatever it is that you wish to study, please go ahead and study that. Because sometimes you need, um, like uh, I can tell you, a few years ago, like 10 years back, we had lost the whole technical education thingy. It was not marketable anymore. Right now we are actually getting funding to train people on technical skills. So the world rotates. And like we have been saying this one, I said it, Paul has said it. It is not how what you do that has changed. It is how you do it that sets you apart. So if you want to become uh, an HR like Paul, go ahead and become an HR. If you want to become a teacher like Irene, go ahead and become a teacher. And then from there, look for opportunities that will propel you to your next level. Do not ever be comfortable by the basics. You know, there are people who are very comfortable getting the bare minimum. Please don't get comfortable with bare minimum. Keep growing yourself. Keep like I mean, Paul has just said here, he's a certified professional mediator. He has also said he works in a community um, uh, setup where he, he helps green or like, talk talk. He plants trees every Saturday. He enjoys doing that, you know? He might get funding to continue uh, planting trees and that will be a whole income uh, opportunity for him. So it, th there is no like one size fits all. I can tell you that for sure. Just make sure that you follow your heart and also be in touch with what is happening in the workplaces so that you can know how do you develop those skills that you actually have. Uh, there's the idea of who you know still apply. Well, I, I, I believe we're in a society of where networking actually works. Um, and like Paul has said, in networking, it is not what you, what you can get. It is what you can give. In fact, sometimes I keep thinking, uh, I get a lot of messages, give me a job, give me a job, give me a job. And I'm like, I have a hundred people looking for jobs. What sets you apart? What is the one differentiator that you have that will make me remember that uh, Dalton is actually looking for a job? Yeah, because I mean, we have a following of over 10,000 people. So you can imagine if 10% of those people are looking for jobs, how will I remember who you are? You know? So, and that, that, the onus is not on me. Don't say that Yati Grace and Onge, she's speaking like she's very proud. No, it's the, the, I'm laying, laying it as it is. I'm telling it like it is. What is the differentiator? What is that the one thing that I can remember you for? What else was I supposed to answer? <laughs> I think let's leave it at that, Madam Grace. I know you can talk and talk your passion, your passion, your heart. And uh, we are running out of time. I think we need to close this in the next uh, seven minutes as we go to uh, 9.40. And uh, maybe just word on something to someone who was saying, how do you know the right career and the course to, uh, to pick? And uh, Grace is talking about passion. I'm also a believer that whatever course you ever take never goes to waste. And this, you can take it from me. Um, when I started, I, I like telling people that uh, growing up, I didn't know what I wanted to become. But one thing I knew is that I didn't want to become a teacher. But now see my life. But how did, did I start? I started by doing marketing management. You know, that was my cause. Because by the time, I, I, I'm not one of those people who went directly to, cam to campus. But I went to, to college when I was still working. I was doing marketing research. And so I thought, why not do marketing? And let me tell you, I'm now in the world of education. You know, my life as a teacher, I love it. I enjoy it. But one of the things that makes me, you know, thrive best is the marketing course that I did. 
uh, I'm looking at Grace and she says she did journalism and uh, now she's a HR uh, practitioner and professional. And I'm seeing a lot of the journalism in her because the webinar she conducts, the way she's able to do, you know, public speaking and present herself, I still see the journalism aspect coming out uh, for her and working very well for her. Um, one of the things that I say as an employer we are looking for, if, I, if you came to an interview at, uh, at Hallmark Institute of Professionals and um one of the people who are interviewing you besides uh, having you know knowledge and qualifications for that role that we you are we we, we are advertised for i will be looking at what else can you do what is the extra thing that you can do if you if we are calling for someone to do you know traditional marketing and you come and say i can do digital marketing i can do graphics design you know we look at you and we are saying you can do more than you know one two three things that is one of the things that we will sell you so i think um i like telling young people that no course that you take will ne will ever go to waste. There comes a point in time where it will come working for you. So it's very important what you find to learn, keep learning and keep adding to what you can be able to, uh, to, to do. Uh, the question of uh, do you have to know someone or you, you know who you know, you know matters in the sector. Uh, the other day I actually learned and I can confirm, it's not just about who you know, but it is also about who knows you. It is about who knows you. So as you present yourself there for, for networking, make sure you are getting to do real networks that are going to work for you in the future. And so as we come to a conclusion, I want to give Mr. Paul an opportunity to do the closing remarks. I know there are so many questions. We have shared a link for you to join our life skills page where you can keep asking those questions. We can see whether you're going to do, you know, a phase two of this. And uh, we keep learning, we keep learning. I will be sharing a Tara solution on the platform so that you can also uh, check them on YouTube and their, their, their social media platform so that you can learn. Because I'll tell you, uh, I, I can confidently say I am what I am, courtesy of learning from these experts in the industry. Buona Paul. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I think for me, it's about uh, the power of consistency. Uh, career is nothing short of consistency. And, and one of the powerful quotes that I always say and Grace is aware is that if, of course, if you are persistent, you'll get it. But if you are consistent, you'll keep it. The importance of career trajectory is consistency. The other thing which is quite important, and I think we have actually been able to uh, amplify, is the importance of visibility. No one will give it out to you. You have to go, go out there, attend networking events. You have no idea who you're going to meet there. You may, you, may, you may actually meet your next big thing or sometimes even make actually meet your influencer. So keep doing your best. Attend as many trainings as possible. Show up. Be visible. Uh, try as many things as possible. It is very difficult nowadays to get actually somebody who is actually confined to a particular silo that I'm a marketing manager. Be as diverse and as versatile as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, Madam Grace, your closing remarks, and then I'll close this for us. Right. I, I, I think, uh, Paul, I love, love, love that quote. If you're persistent, you'll get it. If you're consistent, you'll keep it. I love that. Um, what are my closing remarks? I, I think Paul has captured quite a lot, but probably what I can say, be the best at what you do. And for sure, uh, it will come for you. Keep perfecting your skills. Keep getting better. Progress, not perfection. Progress, not perfection. Thank you, Irene. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Grace and Mr. Paul. I can't thank you enough. And on behalf of all these learners, I know we will we will keep following you. We will keep learning and uh, we, we, we salute you. Thank you for availing yourself. Thank you to Tim Hallmark, Dalton, uh, Christine. I think once again, you can keep sharing the invite to the Life Skills page. I am seeing Paul's hand is up, if I'm not wrong, and I'm just admiring your background. It looks very, you know, you look like you're at KICC in this week. Please, uh, you can unmute and say what you want to say, and then uh, I'll close with what I wanted to say, just an announcement. Thank you. I just want to salute actually the Institute for what you are doing. It's not all the institutes which do this. Please keep doing this. Very, very important. So I just want to sincerely congratulate you. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. And it goes a long way. Thank you so much. I was saying Tim Hallmark, Christine Dalton. Um, I don't know whether whether uh, Josphat made it to the to the to the meeting, but we also have our board members. I don't know whether Mr. Mwangangi was still with us. My professor, I salute you, an expert in the pensions industry. But just to conclude by saying, like I said, when we were starting, we offer a dynamic courses, professional academic courses, which are examined by the national bodies, including the CASNEB, the, the HRM PEB, the CDAC, um, and also uh, which other one? Uh, that one is keeping my, my mind. Okay, HRM PEB, uh, CASNEB, the neck. Yeah, neck is what was keeping my attention. And so if you're looking to be a professional HR, like uh, Grace CHRPK, we have that course for you. We also have uh, programs for the young people who have just finished Home 4. They are not going to campus. You can come and do your diploma. If you have done your degree and you need to do your professional courses like the CPAs, the CHRPs and the likes, we are there for you. Remember we said our programs are very uh, flexible. And uh, just to add, for those of you who are there, you're looking for other opportunities, extra things to do. We have marketing uh, opportunities open for you. Uh, you can apply. Uh, I think on the on the life skills page, we are going to stay to send um, a request for you to apply because we are looking for people to uh, do marketing with us. And also, uh, finally, somebody was asking if we can have CPD points to some of these programs because they are very enlightening and uh, you would also want to use Use them to be in good standing with the IHRM and just good news is to say that yes very soon we are launching our CPD points our programs with the IHRM so be on the lookout and definitely as we learn from the best you're going to be uh, earning the CPD points uh, also to just maybe mention that some of them we may need you to pay just a small fee because of course the CPD point courses comes with a small cost and so we'll be sharing with that thank you Christine for continuously sharing an invite to our pages and for those of us that we meet there um, we can we will encourage you to also check out on the YouTube a page for Atara solutions so that you can be able to learn more. Some of the programs and some of the questions that we are asking here, they can be very well answered if you learn even through their programs. And uh, I think with that, I just want to declare the blessings of God upon us and say wherever you are, our mantra as Hallmark Institute of Professionals is to transform lives. And so we welcome you to join with us so that you can be transforming lives wherever you, we, you will be or wherever you are. Our lines are open, our offices are open at Harambe Avenue at Agriculture House. Feel free to join us. And I think in respect of time, I would want to end this at that and say, may God bless you. Thank you so much, uh, um, uh, Madam Grace and Mr. Paul. We can't thank you enough once again. May God bless you. And to all our learners, for your patience and everything, may God bless you. I believe you have learned. May you go and transform lives. Asante Nisan. Have a blessed night. Thank you. Goodbye. I, I think there's somebody who was asking how they can get in touch with Paul and myself. Maybe they can connect with us on LinkedIn. Yes, yes, yes. That would be great. Uh, for Paul and uh, uh, Grace, you can connect with them at LinkedIn as Grace has advised. But if you really feel pressed and you don't want to go the LinkedIn way, I, I am very generous. I think that's one of my characteristics, Grace. I'm very generous. You reach out to us and we'll be able to share with you the contacts. God bless you. With their permission, of course. Blessings. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you and have a good night. God bless you all. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, bye.